going on, man? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Why do you got to wear a fucking tank top? Are you trying to fucking make me jealous or what? Maybe a little bit. Look at these fucking arms. What the fuck, Nick? I don't even train arms. Seriously, when was the last time you trained arms? Like an, an actual arm day? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Last year, maybe? Seriously. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an arm day. I've never done arms. What do you do? Really? You just do like buys with fucking back and like triceps with chest? Is that what you do? No, I actually do chest and biceps and shoulders and triceps. Yeah, I've done that too. Only <laughs> because like after back, I, I'm like fried. I don't really want to yeah. train nothing else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, do you do like a full bicep workout or is it like just a, like six sets or something like that? Yeah. Like after, after, after chest. Well, no, I'll do like three exercises and like just one main set and then yeah. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So for people listening, you'll probably do like three total sets for each exercise, but like one good one, like one. Yeah. Failure. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's it. Is that always, is that how you grew them though? Cause you know, this is a funny thing. I, I, people always put out like stuff about how they train but it's not how they got to where they are. So how did you get to where, like, how did your arms get that way in the first place? Oh, I, always, I definitely had an arm day when I first yeah. started. Like, I, okay. I trained arms. Like, I was that guy that did, like, 25 sets for biceps, 25 sets for triceps. Like, yeah, but, you know, it's funny. I, we're, we're laughing, but everybody I know who has big arms did that. I know. Like, when I talked to, I talked to Patrick Moore. And he's like, you know, everybody thinks his arms are all fucking synthalled up. And he's like, no, nah, man. He's like, this shit's real. He's like, I used to just do like an hour of fucking biceps. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So that's probably what I did wrong. I never, ever did that. And then I, I just got to a point where like my arms just came, became too overpowering that I yeah. just, I couldn't train them really. But you know what I always noticed is like guys either have like, they're either torso dominant or they're limb dominant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like your arms yep. are humongous, but you're trying to get a bigger chest. That's we. So when I actually train, train, train chest now, I actually take a more uh, wider grip on everything. Yeah. Just to take the tricep out of it. But do you feel I that? Can't puts, go as heavy, but I feel my chest more. So. Yeah, but do you feel that puts a lot of strain on the shoulder joint, like right here? Not yet. I'm sure eventually. Because I feel like when I do that, like if I go like way out wide. Yeah. I feel like I put a lot of strain in that in that spot right there. When I go, like normally when I used to like bench and shit, like I would be like right here. Yeah, I'm not so, I'm ki I'm kinda like that now. Like maybe a little so bit. I would only go like I only go like a little bit, like for like just just not like crazy wide, but like yeah, yeah. So you're like normal now before you were closer. <laughs> yeah, I was almost like doing a close grip. Maybe that's why your triceps are so big. Probably. Huh. I'm trying because to get my I, I, it, it makes sense because like my my chest has grown a lot. I mean, it's still a weaker body part, I believe. But like when I was younger, my chest I didn't really have one, and my arm, my triceps were just overpowering. Yeah, and that's just because I was using tricep for majority of my my chest workout. So you think your chest is doing is growing more now that you've moved your grip out a bit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, huh. I wonder how many people are watching that have trouble building their chest and they do the same thing. Because I usually. I usually, sorry to interrupt you, I, see, I usually see the opposite thing. Really? When I, when I see younger guys lay down, I see them go, it's almost like they're going too wide. Well, yeah, well, they do, they do go too wide. Yeah. I, I, when I, when I, if I, if I bench, I'll usually put like my, um, instead of like people use like their pinky or the ring finger, I use like my middle finger. For like that soft spot on the bar? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you know, the, where like the- Where the, the rings are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying, if, if, if there's no rings on the bar, I usually think like, kind of, at that point, if there's no rings on the bar, I think like one fist outside your shoulders. Yeah. Does that make sense? Who is that? That's my, my boy and my roommate. That's Cam. What's up? What's up, Cam? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What's your situation now? You got a roommate? Well, yeah. When I moved down here, I moved into his spot for right now. So you're in Florida now? Yeah. Yeah. And, you're, and you're living with him, and then what? You're going to get your own place? In time, yeah. Once everything starts to build up, my YouTube builds up more, things like that. And How's your training going now that you're down there? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah? I love it. Why? What's so different? I, I don't, like, just the atmosphere, the gym itself, the people I'm around. I, I used to, like, love off days, and now I just dread them. I do that. I feel that way, too. I'm like, and, and there's always like in this gym, like we have all different equipment, like yeah. 
10 different things for like each body part. So it's like, you never get bored. And it's like, I just, I want to go train. I'm tired, but I want to go train. What do you think? It, it's such a contrast. I have trouble staying home on rest days. Like I oh, hate yeah. it. I, like I do it. I have to, but I hate I'll it. I'll go to the grocery store and just walk around sometimes. <laughs> I'm not really buying anything. I'm just, <laughs> just browsing. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yes, I do. You literally <laughs> just walk around. Or I might buy shit like I don't need. And then I, like, I'll come home and I'm like, I don't, I'm not even going to use this. Yeah, I'm not going to do you ever, you, ever, you ever eat at the grocery store? Sometimes. They got samples, yeah. Like when No, but like when you walk in. Oh, you mean like actually to open something? And oh, yeah, it? yeah. No. I, <laughs> I see that all the time, man. That's a, <laughs> no, because like I walk in, you know, how they have like, I don't know about your grocery store you go, to, you go to, but at the grocery stores I go to, when you walk in, there's always all the cooked food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have like the sandwiches and shit. Yeah. So I found a secret to not spending so much money. If I walk in and I grab a sandwich <laughs> and I eat the sandwich while I'm shopping, it kind of like I'm kind of full, then I won't buy as much shit. <laughs> you know, they tell you, right? <laughs> no, like it's true. You know, they say don't ever go shopping if you're hungry. Yep. So, you're buy. So, so I eat the sandwich. That way I'm like kind of full and I can shop. That's and I don't, buy, I don't buy <laughs> extra stuff. Tomorrow, I'm off tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow, so I'm going to give that a try. I, but wait, I, before anybody says anything, I pay for it. Like, I, I take the, yeah. like, if I open the container, I eat the sandwich, I take the container to the, the container. and I give it to, and they always, they always laugh, but I'm like, whatever, man, here, fuck. I was hungry, what do you want from me, fuck. Um, anyway, no, I was going to say, uh, why do you think, this is what I find strange, guys like me and you are like, don't know what to fucking do with ourselves on our day off, and we're trying to get back to the gym. And then I have people messaging me going, I can't find the motivation to go to the gym. And I'm like, I don't know how the fuck you stay home. I mean, neither. Do you think it's because they work a full-time job or do you think it's just that it's, they don't Probably. love it? If, don't... If it's, yeah. If it's people that actually work and do shit for a living, yeah. then it's probably harder for them. And people yeah. like that we like training is what we do. It's a lot harder to just chill. I would imagine if I worked like from fucking eight to six or something or like nine to five and, and I wasn't competing or anything, I probably wouldn't care. The last thing you want to do is work out. Like you want to go yeah. home, probably go to sleep. Yeah. Spend some time with your friends or some shit, family. Yeah. But I don't know. I think, you know what? I don't know if that's true. I think but even it's when just... I did work a full time, full time job at one point, I couldn't wait to get off work and go train. Like that's, what that's what I'm trying to say. Like even when I, man, I was a carpenter for a little while. That job sucked. I was tired as yeah. fuck. And I was working 10 hour days and I would get off work and I, I would still go to the gym. Yeah. Like, so I don't think it's a matter of having a job. I think it's like either you love it or you don't. Yeah, I agree. Right. Yeah. Something you, it's either, yeah, you either love it or you just have a passion for it. Are you guys locked down over there or no? Not no. Nope. Yeah. You're lucky. We're locking uh, down. I, We're I, locking I, down here ever going to shut down again is that the pitch what why did that picture come up what picture there's a picture of you that came up did it yeah did somebody text somebody text you no <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> uh we're supposed to have a guest that's supposed to be on with us and i'm gonna i know it's a secret <laughs> oh wait he's texting me This always happens with this guy. Who is it? I can't tell you. Is he coming on? Yeah, he's supposed to be. He just, he always, <laughs> he, it's always a fucking problem with him. Okay. One sec. But sorry, sorry, Nick. No, you're good, bro. How's your off season going? Why are you still, I, I still don't know why you're so lean. I, I've been eating a lot, man. Are you going to gain any fucking weight? I'm trying. I ate a lot on Thanksgiving. I had a nice big breakfast yesterday morning. I went to a nice Mexican place last night. So what you, what's your Thanksgiving like? Is it, are you, you're Italian, right? Yeah. Is it Italian food or is it Thanksgiving food? Oh, you're well, not I went to one of my, uh, one of my boss's family's Thanksgiving sometime okay. in Florida. And they had, it was like a half and half. Like they had, um, they have pasta and like the, the stuffing was like, a, you could tell the like Italian meats. Yeah. That was phenomenal. 
<laughs> I ate a lot of that stuff. What's Thanksgiving like for you? Do you sit and have like one meal or you go back like all night till all the food's gone? No, I eat a lot. Like I had about probably three or three, three plates fulls. And then I had a plate full of dessert. What, uh, what, what body part do you save for the next day? You train that day or no? Next day, right? I train hamstrings in the morning. And then uh, the next day I trained shoulders and that was a, that was a nice pump. Yeah. Huh? Well, I don't know. Uh, I got a bunch of questions here that I want to, I want to get answered. And the first one, the first one I want to ask you is about cupping. Cause this guy's asking about cupping. So I saw that you posted, I've done cupping before, but I've never done cupping while like doing an exercise. And I noticed you were doing cupping, but you were squatting at the same time. Yeah. So, what that does is it, it while you're in the motion, everything's pretty much it's tight. Yeah, bound up. And but once you're done, and he takes them off, everything releases. Yeah, but that's supposed to do that anyways, without even mo any motion. It does, so but it, it makes it more intense when you're actually doing movement with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you take them off and then do the exercise again, it's like nothing. How bad does it hurt though? Doing the exercise with, with the, cup the cups in? on, yeah. Oh, it doesn't. No? Mm -hmm. I used to fucking hate those. But you actually notice a difference. Like, you notice relief. Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. I haven't done it in a long time. I kind of I kind of got away from it. I love doing it. I'm, I'm actually doing it tomorrow morning. Do you ever get the cups where the guy moves the cup along the muscle? Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, that's the one I remember getting that. That's he said he used to tell me that it's because the fascia is sticking to the muscle. Does that make sense? It's sticky? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Um, favorite best Thanksgiving sides and how many plates and seconds did you have? You already answered the how many plates. What's your favorite side? From this year, the stuffing. All right. Thoughts about non-competitive lifters using PEDs? I mean... It's your choice. What do you, do you care? care? <laughs> but is there a point? I never, you know what? Oh. Let me ask you this. Did you ever do. Okay, if you're going to ask me, do you think there's a point of if you're not competing to take, you know, a bunch of PEDs? No, I don't. I think it's stupid. But it's your choice. I mean, yeah. I'm not one to judge. Let me ask you this. Did you ever do any PEs before you competed? No. When I, when I started, I was 18 when I started, and I was pretty much planned on doing a show that same year. Yeah, that's what I did. I started at 20, and I, did, I, I gave myself 14 months to do my first show. Yep. So I planned, like, that was the start of everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't think, I don't know, man. I have some friends who are a little bit older, and they're still doing gear, and I'm like, oh, you're not going to compete no more, man. Why are you bothering like, I don't, I don't see a point. Like if you're not, I, I shouldn't say, I mean, I don't want to, you're right. We're not, I'm not one to like judge, but at the same time, I don't see the point if you're not doing it for competitive reasons. Oh, I agree. Like when I'm done competing, I probably won't take much, nothing anymore. You probably just take TRT. Oh yeah. I'll run. I, I, yeah. I was you kind of have to, but like, as far as everything else, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Be a little H, but <laughs> Now it's, like a full, it. now it's a full cycle. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a little GH, maybe a little TRT. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got our, our little trend. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck. Where did the beard go? You know my beard? I oh. didn't even recognize hey! it. Whoa. When did that come off? It felt like the world just stopped for five seconds. When did, when did this come I, off? Check Instagram. What's the big announcement, guy? That I shaved my beard. That's the big announcement. His fucking I, beard is gone. My, my mom so easy to manipulate social media. It's been so good. I've been getting blown up all day and ignoring everybody. I know. My mom texted me. like, I think guy's going to bail out of the Olympia. <laughs> Actually, I remember I saw that. I thought the same thing. I'm sorry. I was like, what are you talking about? Are you guys upset that I didn't bail or more upset that I shaved my beard? <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not upset at all, actually. I, I think you look great. Look like a fucking high school little man. Are you? Let me ask you this: Are you? Look bigger. Let me. Are you? Are you disappointed? Or do you regret it? Yeah, I, I actually filmed the whole thing. 
Yeah, but do you regret it now? Do you wish you kept your beard? Yeah, because the first thing I did after I shaved it was I went in the shower and totally unbeknownst to me, like I just shaved it five minutes later, get in the shower, put beard soap in my hand and go like this, like like hard in my face. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and today, like I pulled my mask down, like went to go grab my beard and I was like, fuck, this is weird. But what, but what about the way you look? Are you happy with the way you look? It's always like the shock factor. Yeah. When you shave it to like see how sunken in your face really is. And I'm like, is my face as sunken as I thought I was? And it, like, I started seeing like bones under my eyes that I've never seen. I was like, my face is really sunken. But it, look, it does look sunken. Eh? Do you feel uglier or better looking? I feel way sexier like this. <laughs> <laughs> the beard covers the. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> when I shave my beard, oh, yeah, I explain. This is why, and I'm going to tell you why. All right. A, if people don't know, I'm short. I have big ears, and I know I look like a gnome with a beard. That's no, that's everybody. We all. Everybody tries to joke like that's new. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I dye it, and my face starts to sink, you, it, my beard actually looks like it's it, it's hanging differently on my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it starts to look awkward. I actually start to look like an old like like grizzly Middle. like garden gnome statue and i'm like all right now it's got like it can go and i won't be that mad because yeah. when my face is fat it covers the chins and all that shit that's why i have it see this covers all the fat right here yeah it does and people they're like it was like oh you, you look like you're in shape like it's gonna get to my neck <laughs> <laughs> but i i other than opposite from you i think my beard looks better when i'm shredded my beard looks better when i'm sh wait 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 yeah your beard looks better than mine? Well, that too. We've already had this fucking argument and you lost, sadly. <laughs> no, I, didn't believe, I did not lose. You we'll have a one-man bet. You, Pull, you, you said I lost. I didn't because, say I lost. Well, okay, we'll have Nick as a deciding factor. What's he going to decide? The, two, two pictures. Didn't we, didn't we do this? I sent you the picture. No, you didn't. Oh, wait. I did sent you? it to you. <laughs> I, I, I remember I wrote, I wrote, like, I sent it to you. I go, uh, it was like an easy win or something. One second, one second. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> if people saw half the conversations between us, they'd take You said, you, I think you showed me, like, you, you had, like, a proper, like, beard trim in the whole bit. Yeah, uh, well, that was my best beard picture. I said your best beard picture versus mine. Was no, it wasn't beard. It wasn't beard picture. It was your best picture, period. That was my best picture of my yeah. beard. Period. Yeah, I, my best picture would crush your best picture. Are you high? Do you remember what I used to look like when I was younger? You had hair on your head? I was a fucking model for fuck's sakes. There we fucking go. <laughs> you were a Not model. For beards. Uh, <laughs> one second. I'm trying to find guys' pictures. I got to find it now. I can send it to you again. If you oh, want. I got it. Okay, uh, look. Is there a way you can put them online for all the folks at home? He sent me this shit. Look. Listen, your iPhone fucking five. Look, look at that fucking. There's not a hair out of place. <laughs> that is a fresh looking beard. All See? Right. Now pull up your fucking picture. My best picture? <laughs> yeah, not like one of you in your underwear. Okay. <laughs> one second, I'm gonna find a, I'm gonna find a, a good picture. We can have an easy. You can. This could be an easy debate. You could post on your fucking story. Who has a better beard? We're gonna let Nick decide. It's not beard. It was best picture. It wasn't best beard. You said I'm better looking than you, and I said there's no fucking way your best picture beats my best picture. Oh wait, so wait, this was. I thought it was a best beard picture. No, it wasn't. You said I'm better looking than you, and I said. Maybe now there's a debate, but overall, my best picture beats your best picture. Wait, I, then I didn't send you my like real like like Jersey jerk off GQ. <laughs> that's what you mean. Oh, that's what you're gonna oh. show. Uh, it's totally what I'm gonna show. 100. percent Look, look at this. Notice how Fuad gets the full screen for his fucking picture. <laughs> <laughs> I got the iPhone. <laughs> He's so cheap. Look at I win. Look at the picture down there. What are you, what are you holding on to above your head? Look at this. That right one. Here. Boom. Look at that shit. That's a fucking. That's look a, at the picture. <laughs> what are you looking? What are you looking for? What do you want? What do you want me to pull up, guy? The one with you, your hands over your head. This one. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Yeah. That's the shit. Those are my. Those are my modeling photos, guy. Huh? Those are my modeling photos. Are they? In, what is it called? A portfolio? Did you have a portfolio? This is my portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, you look good without the beard. You let your shit get out of hand, though. Your beard's like, 
scraggly and like it gets like it like pubes when it gets like long like it doesn't go straight it starts going like 80 directions see if you kept it like this all the time then dude so ready for that i cut that my barbers came out maestros from pa to cut my hair for that olympia i got that cut went right through the fucking um right to the stage. olympians because when i weighed in it was like all over the place and then i got it nicely trimmed up the next day Robin Chang walks up to me and goes, much better. I like it. Take it off. <laughs> Take it like, off? Yeah. Really? Yep, and I took it off. Why do, yep. you think they, why do you think they care about the beard so because much? Because they said it distracts from the physique. I was just with JM in Pittsburgh this past weekend, and I was like, you like the beard? He's like, yeah. I go, what about for stage? He goes, no. <laughs> I didn't, you know what? I thought that was a myth. I didn't think they cared. No. They, I mean, Weinberger said he doesn't care. But if one judge out of seven cares, I, I, I'll take it. Yeah, it's not worth it, yeah. It's just a respect. Like, it grows back like that. It doesn't matter. I wonder if they care about Nick's, though, because Nick's is, like, tiny little beard. It's not, like, long. And no, because uh, Flex has, the, like, the little Irish fucking leprechaun chin trap, too. Yeah. This is <laughs> one. yeah. Nick, why don't you grow your shit out? Like, get a nice, thick fucking beard going. I was thinking about it. I'm curious. This is, this is the month Did to I do, do it. it? Yeah. yeah. Do it. I want to see what it looks like. All right, I'll do it. Every time he comes on, I give him fashion advice. Last time I told him to keep his hair, so he's got his hair. He's yeah. only telling you to keep his hair because his is gone and mine's fucking already on his way. Going in reverse. <laughs> you're you're one hundred percent right. What I my said, thought, to him, yeah. My exact words to him were, "Don't shave it because one day it won't. You won't have it." So hey, keep- oh, I was going to show you. I forget it. What? I got well. I'll oh. t- on the podcast no, about what, should, what the picture I sent you. We should talk about this other thing that you got, but it's kind of a shit photo. You want to see it's in my garage? Wait. Why won't it blow up? I'm like a 60 year old man with a phone. I don't know how to use it. Oh yeah, that's dope. What is that? An M4? M440. Yeah, the I, the two twenty twenty one. There we go. I got some focus there. Who I was like posted online. I was like, I sent it to you. It didn't post online. I would post that shit, man. That's fucking beautiful. Look how nice that shit is. You know how people get, bro. They think you're trying to brag. I'm not one to brag about Listen, shit. Listen, man. I, I think like this is what I think about that. I think real your real fans will be very happy for you. And the assholes that are just trolling your page or just like Fairweather fans are going to be like, yeah. oh, look, you're showing off. Dude, fuck those people. Who cares? The people that are really, people that are really support you are going to be happy that you're doing well. That's the whole point. Yeah, it was, just, it was more like, honestly, if people, like, it was more of a business move because – um, with the, with the taxing and stuff that that might happen if fighting gets in, like, you know, if, if Jersey gets hit higher with taxes, what I did was they gave me a very good number for my old BMW. They gave me eleven thousand for my two thousand eleven. I didn't so know you I, had a BMW. I had a two thousand eleven that had fifty eight thousand miles on it. I, I never drove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they gave me eleven thousand for that. I owed eighteen on my truck, so I paid eleven, put another seven towards my truck, paid my truck off. So that's a write off for this year. Yeah. And then I, I got a higher lease payment, which I wanted so that I could write the lease payment off every Wait a minute. Year. Wait a minute. Sorry, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't paying attention. Did you, is, do you still have your truck or did you get rid of the truck too? No, no, the truck I just paid off. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now yeah. it's paid off because you can't write off two work vehicles. So what is that? So are you, do you do what I do? Like is your truck your daily driver and like you kind of just take the BMW Yeah, sometimes? the BMW, like I only got 10,000 miles a year on it because like from the, my truck's in the shop getting new brakes. Once I get my truck back, that car will sit here until April. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so like ten thousand miles are, are plenty for me. I bought a Trackhawk uh, like two months ago, and I put a video up of it. I saw it. Yeah, and this guy fucking comments. He's like, "Oh, you're so fucking arrogant." Blah blah. So blah. I saw some of those comments, which is, was one of the reasons why I didn't post my shit. Yeah, but I'm like, okay. First of all, this is the way I see it. People that follow you actually want to know that shit. Yeah. Like people message me because they know I bought a truck recently. They're like, oh, I'll post your truck, and I'm like, I'm good on when it's done. Like yeah. once all the mods are done, I'll post it. Yeah. But I'm not doing it. And plus, even if I was, even if I wanted to post it because I was proud of it, doesn't mean I'm bragging. I'm not like, oh, fuck you. I'm better than you. I'm just proud of fucking what I got. That's not yeah. like, so what? I was telling somebody, I, I forget who I was talking about. I was having the same conversation. I was like, if my parents see it, and my parents are happy. It was co- <laughs> <laughs> What's he yeah. want? He's probably, hold on. Is he mad at you for dying for? No. <laughs> Yeah, do, why are you happy I shaved my beard? Is that why you're calling? No, no, no. I'm doing a Fuad's podcast. Can I call you back in like an hour? Yeah, no problem. Bye. All right, bye. He 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 hates my beard. Well, he's happy now that it's gone. 
but no, I was saying though that like the my my parents seeing my success makes me happy. Other like that's all that I really care about. My parents seeing it like that brings me fucking ha- like happy. Do you think? Like, you know. Let me ask you this, Nick. Let me ask you this. Do you think it means something bad about you if you post something that you bought that you're proud of? No, I don't think it does. What? Oh, what does Nick? I want to know what Nick thinks. No, I don't. Like if you bought like a new watch or a new something and you wanted to like just show people, just be like, check this out. I got this thing. It's fucking cool. I'm proud of it. Does it mean you're bragging? No, because for me, it's like if I'm able to afford an expensive watch, I'm going to show that off because I'm happy I got it. Yeah. Is it, is guy, is it bragging? No, 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 no. It just, you know what it is? I've never done it. So I feel like awkward doing it because I know. Why why do people get, why do people get offended by that? Is this jealousy or is it like, what is it? of course, yeah. a lot of people don't like to see other people succeed. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny because when I see people post shit they bought, I don't get... If it's somebody I know, I'm happy for them. I'm like, oh, that's fucking cool as hell. Yeah, yeah. If it's somebody I know, I'm happy for them. And if it's somebody I don't know, I'm usually like, how can I get that? Yeah. I'm not like, oh, fuck that guy. I'm like, I'm like how can I get that same thing? And I got to figure out a plan to get it. Yeah. So I find it very strange when someone like sees something nice and they get mad. Oh, I'm the polar opposite. I see something nice. I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, right. Like, like, like you posting about your shit. Like Regan posting about his truck. Like, I, I'm, I think that shit's cool as hell. Yeah, like, good, like Dusty, Dusty posted his truck. Dusty recently. Hunter did too. Yeah, Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. yeah, yeah. Nah, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, man. It's fucked up. Um, guy, I have like a f- fucking whole bunch of questions here. You want to answer some? I'll answer whatever you want, Matt. Wait a minute, before we go on, how's your prep going? You're like two weeks out. Yeah, this is. Uh, I gotta say, man, I don't know what. It, it, and I'll say it's this John Meadows shit has changed my entire fucking outlook. Can you can you say can you say publicly that I saved your career? <laughs> That's a fucking bold statement. <laughs> I took your advice and it helped greatly. Yes, that it did. Your pictures look fucking good, man. Oh, you, you do less volume now. I'm doing. Remember, it. Nick, Nick, you were part. Nick, you were. Yeah, part Nick of was that. actually part of that discussion. Nick, yeah. you get you me, Nick, me and you saved guys' career. Do you remember the? Don't you remember that podcast we did? Yeah, just because you're bigger, I'll still fucking pump you. So don't get smart. <laughs> yeah. they, they remember we were like, "Guy, you're doing way too much shit." And he's like, "No." Oh, I'll say this: I do less volume now, but his the his workouts kick the living shit out of me. Like yeah, I that's... like I've never been physically exhausted and like drenched, soaking wet when the way I am when I train. But let me but let me ask you this because I I know the same feeling right because my best progress came with John from 2014 to 2016 those two years I worked I did his training program so let me ask you this isn't it crazy like you're doing less volume but the muscle feels more taxed but your tendons and joints feel better my overall knees back and shoulders feel the best they have in fucking years yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing things I've never done. Like every morning I do cardio and then I stretch for 30 minutes. Like I, I posted it um, not too long ago. Well, the cardio, the cardio you're used to, it's a stretch. You're saying this has stretching. Stretching is brand new too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is, but I will say this too. This is the first year and people might not understand this. Some might, you might, Nick might, well, Nick's young. He, might, he doesn't understand the business side of like that much yet, but he will because he's been successful already. But when you become successful, a lot of times when I was dieting for shows, I was concerned with a lot of other things rather than just the show. This is the first time I literally wake up, I do cardio, I stretch, I eat, I go to physical therapy right after I eat. I get worked on almost three times a week. And then I come home, I eat again. I go to like, my days are based around bodybuilding and it's never my, I never did that. And I'm doing that this year because it's a, it's a very important year for my career because my placing of this Olympia, I mean, granted I didn't have a great off season, but, I think this the Olympia will determine kind of where my next step is in the, in the sport of bodybuilding. And I, I had to put a hundred percent focus into this. And even like my, like my black Friday stuff didn't even come in. Like my shelves are empty. And like, I didn't even care because I was like, I'll, I, I can focus on that another time. Like I, this is the most important thing right now. So, I mean, and the, the amount of stuff that I'm taking and how I look is like, it, it doesn't even make sense. And I'm, I, I wait. I, I'm not ashamed to say. It. Yesterday morning, I was 202. I haven't been fucking 202 in fucking five years. But you look better than you have in a but long time. When I went to, to JM and they they looked at me, they go, "I go, how much do you think I weigh?" They're like 225. I said, "Nope." Yeah. They're like yeah. 230. I said, "You're going the wrong way." 
He's yeah. like 215. I said, nope. He's like 210. Nope. 208. I go, nope. That day I was 204. The next day I got almost 202. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, and, and I'm eating a lot. Like I was eating at one point, I was eating fucking two burgers and two fries every three days. Yeah. yeah. Like crazy hide, eight pieces of toast for breakfast, jelly, fucking cream of rice. It was. Let me ask you, what is it that you're doing differently that's making your fat come off so quickly? Are you doing DMP? I, I'm doing... <laughs> I'm not even doing, I'm doing no clen. I'm doing no T3. I'm doing nothing. For those of you who don't right know. Hand, my right hand to God. For those I, of you who don't I, wait. I was on, up until two weeks ago, I was on test and growth. That was it. My right hand, on, on, my, on all my knees. I believe, I believe you. I believe, if, you have, if you have good growth and good, yeah, I believe you. That's all yeah. I've been on up until two yeah. weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we added in what are some you, orals, but I'm on no fat burners, zero. No clen, no T3, no nothing, zero. Do you, do you think your age, because me and you are close to the same age, you're, you're obviously a little younger. But, yeah, you're a little younger, but do you think because of your age, because I remember being 38, and you're like, you know, 40 is around the corner, and a lot of us, 40 is that benchmark where you're like. This is it. Yeah, so do you think your age is playing into the fact that you're so focused because you're like, you know, you're only going to get a couple kicks to can before you're like. Yeah, bro. You know what? It's you start to like wonder what like like I, I it's it's hard to say without sounding like conceited or cocky, but like if you aren't a professional athlete or in some sort of limelight, I guess you kind of don't won't understand it. But like I haven't been able to picture my life with not being a competitive bodybuilder since two thousand and three. I turned I started competing two thousand eight. I turned pro. Like this is all I've known for seventeen years. So coming to the end of that and not knowing like, fuck, like what's after competing is, is kind of nerve wracking. So it's like, I want to go out the right fucking way and, and I'm on my own terms and I want to look my best. And these last couple of years, if this, if I got to put my all into it to, you know, secure my fucking career as one of the fucking best two twelves, then that's what I got to do. That's what I got to do. So I noticed something when I hit 35, I started to appreciate everything a lot more. I appreciate fucking even the guys. But way, but, but way more than like when I was 30, it's because it's so far, like retirement's so far away, you don't get it. Yeah. When I hit 35, I started to appreciate all the fans more, my stage time more. But you know what I appreciate the most? And this is going to shock probably you that I say this. The guys that are coming up, like Derek, John Jewett, all these younger guys, because I remember – me being in my young 20s coming up against the older guys, like the Jose's, the David Henry's, and starting to push them when they when I was coming up. So seeing these young guys fucking pushing me and and yeah. and you know, a lot of these guys are better than me and they have more muscle than me. Yeah. I'm not an idiot. I know I'm not one of the the stacked 212 guys. So I appreciate these young guys fucking training and 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 pushing fucking my, you know, getting me. I know I give these guys a lot of shit sometimes, but yeah. You know, as much as I give them shit, all these guys that fucking guys like Sean Clarita, uh, we could, the last time I competed against him was in 2017 when I when I left the New York Pro and I had those burns. Um, he's I never beat me once. Yeah, he is probably one of the most fucking impressive bodybuilders in the last few years from wh where he started. And I remember telling him at the um, 2015 New York Pro, he took third. I go, one day you're going to win this show. I go, and you're going to do a lot better than you think. And he just keeps getting yeah. fucking better. And that's inspiring too, because he's my age. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I, I love that shit. I, I, I'm going to tell you something funny that people are going to, it's probably going to sound really fucking superficial and whatever. When I, I made a video a little while ago saying I was going to retire because my numbers and, and it still might hold true. I swear to you, one of the things I thought of, and this is going to sound so fucking stupid, but I thought of not ever being on stage again. Like, actually, the act of being on stage. Like, hearing people cheer for you and shit. Like, it's like you don't think that shit affects you, but when you get it for 20 years, yep. and then you're like, wait a minute, there's never going to be another moment where I have a bunch of people cheering for me. <laughs> like, it's not going to, like, where in normal, that, in normal life that doesn't happen, Right. So you it's like, did you ever play a sport growing up? Yeah, I played football. It was like my last day of high school football, my last day yeah, of college yeah, football. Yeah. It was like I'll never get to hit somebody or tackle somebody. But this or, is, but this is even di even more different because it's 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 yeah, it's not a team sport. Yeah, it's it's different, and I don't know what your your football career. You played football in college, didn't you? Fifteen years I played. Yeah. Yeah, so you probably had people cheering for you in football. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, we didn't – football in Canada is not like that. And no, I don't, I'm not, yeah. So yeah. we didn't have fans and people cheering. Bodybuilding was the first place I ever had a, a platform where people would cheer and clap and all that shit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck, there's never going to be another time where people cheer and clap for me. Yeah. And that's really fucking weird. Yeah. Because you I'm just get – I'm thinking about it. Well, because you just assume that it's always going to be there. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. I, Nick, uh, I know. We're, we're saying this, and Nick's like, Nick, how old are you, 25? <laughs> He's like, what the fuck are you guys Nick's talking? Like, Nick's playing with his rubber bands, going, "Fuck you, you old guys!" And like, Nick's gonna blink, and then he's gonna be thirty-eight. And he's gonna go, I I "Those two old fucks with beards, telling me." No, I already know. That's why even now, I mean, I'm only twenty-six, but I appreciate anyone that supports me now because I know it could yeah. it could end any day, really. Yeah, I actually had this conversation with Ian because Ian, I had this conversation with Ian last year, I think. Uh, so I think he was twenty-nine at the time. And I said to him, look, after we, we were done our podcast and I had turned off the recording and I said, look, I, I just want to say something and forgive me if I sound like you're, I'm being your dad, but you have to take a little bit of pressure off yourself and learn to enjoy this thing more because you're going to be my age one day and you're going to fucking, it. can I tell you guy, I don't know if you feel this way, but a lot of my career is a blur. Yeah. Because I would go from one show to the next, just trying to get better. And you, never you don't enjoy the process and never actually enjoy and being so nervous and feeling so much pressure and never, never really enjoying it. Yeah. So like this, this is like the most, and I can tell this is the most focused I've been because I've, I've snapped anybody that like gets in the way of my training at my gym. Yeah. Like in my off season, I'm very fucking like, and I, even now I'll joke around and bust my like training partner's balls. But like when I'm like going and like something gets in the way of my training, like I get, I, and I, like the other day, they were playing shitty music in the gym and some people, and I didn't have my headphones and I still didn't hear the music because I was so fucking zoned in. But there was these kids fucking talking like by the like press all the way across the gym yeah. and they must have had their headphones and they were screaming yeah. at each other. Yeah. And I literally like, I was about to, it was yesterday, I was about to do my set of 3.15 on incline. Yeah. Nick's like 3.15. Shut up, Nick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I literally like, it's I was like sitting in, I was sitting in the fucking incline and I'm like, <laughs> and I go, guys, I go, I, you know I love you. I go, but if you guys keep fucking talking that loud, I'm going to fucking snap. So just please fucking tone it down. And I just, like, did my – like, just I, – I don't have patience. Like, the day I fucking turned my car in, I swore I was going to jail. Yeah. I smashed somebody's rear side view mirror off their car. In the really? middle of it. Yeah. Because they – they I was – I got my car detailed. Yeah. Before I dropped my car – before – before I brought my car to the dealership, I, I got it cleaned. I thought that was a respectful thing to do. Like, I didn't want to bring my BMW there, all junk. So yeah. this is like out of a Jason Bourne movie. Yeah. I'm driving home. I'm in the right lane. Nick's been to my house. He knows the road. And the light turned green. I was behind two cars and a big truck. So I put my blinker on. The light turned green. I'm going 20 miles an hour. I go in the left lane, like very slowly. The guy behind, that I went in front of got really pissed off that I fucking went in front of him. And all of a sudden I hear him like stepping on his gas and I look in my rear view and he goes alongside me in the right lane and he tries to pass me and he can't because there's a car in front of him and there's mm. a car in front of me. So he gets blocked in. I, I can't believe he did this. He slowed down, got side by side with me, gave me a double middle finger, grabbed his wheel and fucking just went right at my car and sent me right into the grass. No, he actually hit you? No, I, I, I moved my car. Oh, okay. But he sent me into the – he pushed me because he came into my lane. Yeah. All the way into the grass, all the way almost into oncoming traffic on the other side of the highway. I got control of my BMW, and I got on the shoulder and passed three cars, and I caught him at the red light. I turned my car completely sideways, got jumped out of my car, grabbed his door handle, and pulled his door handle, and it wouldn't open. And then I get to his door, and he's like this. He goes, you cut in front of me. And I was spit – I was screaming. And then I put my foot like by his wheel so he couldn't go anywhere. And then I saw him put his, he put his car in reverse, went to go back up and I stepped back and then he went forward and I just open hand smacked his fucking side of me and it just went all over. And I called my buddy who's a cop and I'm giving him this guy's license plate and I'm fucking going ballistic on the phone. When you were screaming at his window, were you screaming so much that spit was flying spit out? It was just fucking hitting his <laughs> I was like, get out of the fucking car! <laughs> In Jersey, you can't carry a gun. I've, so been, I've, I've been that angry before. Were you just foaming? It's just, oh, bro. Yeah. I was so, like, it's different if, like, somebody goes to do something. They're like, oh, shit. Like, so, like, my bad. Like, it was, like, deliberate, like, I'm, like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was, like, okay. Now, I was, like, I'm just going to end up in jail for the rest of this prep. 
Jeez. Like my, my fuse is fucking very awesome. He, well, you only got a couple weeks to go. I can tell you're prepped, though. You're fucking wound up tonight. Yeah. You get, you know what? You get me. I it's not me. That. I didn't do anything. He started. I was trying to blame it. Hey, what are you? Are you chewing fucking tobacco? I, 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 I used to dip. I dipped for years, but I stopped chewing. And I told him I only give myself the last three weeks of prep. I chew. What is it? Like an appetite suppressant? Just kind of keeps your it mind It just gives me something to fucking do, bro. This is going to be a really stupid fucking question, but is there anything in tobacco? It actually you, helps me. It helps me go to the bathroom. Okay. And it, when I'm when I'm uh, like a couple of days out, when he's giving me diuretics, yeah, I feel the more I spit, the drier I get. Huh. I wonder if that's a bro science thing or if that's actually a fact. It might be just like I always like the week of the show. I always put my rice in the pan and kind of because I know rice is made with water, so I put it in the pan to try to dehydrate the rice as much as I can to take as much fluid out of the rice because I. Holy okay. Shit. I just yeah. fuck this podcast and fuck you. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. I think, I, I don't know if people might believe in God or not, but I think God works in fucking funny ways. And I like me and you were always friends and we we're never really like tight or close, but just for whatever, when Luke passed away and you asked me to do the podcast, it was like, we never really were like, we weren't that cool. And you asked me to do it. And then it was like, because of your comment about training, I changed it. And like my career just fucking like didn't take off, but like is doing things I didn't think possible at 38, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's like all that shit kind of came full circle. And like, Hey man, I'm just a, I'm just a positive light in the bodybuilding community. Positive. (laughs) (laughs) You spell that word. Guy. Actually, Nick. Yo. Uh, you, you got to put the rubber band down because I keep thinking Rain Man every time you pick it up. <laughs> I got that Rain Man vision. Nick, <laughs> Nick, if you're in prep during Thanksgiving holidays, what do you prep? Do you eat turkey and weigh it out or do anything different than your everyday chicken, fish, eggs, etc.? If I'm in prep? Yeah. I'll eat my regular meals. Guy, obviously. Same fucking thing, bro. All right. Eat my regular meal. Can you use basketball shoes during a heavy leg day? What do you? Hey, that's right, Nick. What do you squat in? Or you don't squat back squat? He doesn't. He doesn't barefoot. Nick, I go barefoot. Guy, you don't know how this podcast thing works. You got to let him talk sometimes. I know Nick so fucking well. <laughs> okay. I, have a, I, have a foot, I have a foot thing with Nick. I tear his feet every time he does stuff. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I've seen him. I've seen him train legs. So when you, Nick, when you train legs, you train everything like barefoot or you just take your shoes off when you hack squat once they're off they don't really go back on so majority of everything yeah. so the whole workouts what about you guy i i wear i don't understand the fucking no shoes thing i just i have flat feet maybe that's why but like i am substantially weaker without shoes on wait a minute what do you but do you train in a flat shoe or a basketball i train in atomics and i love it yeah but it's a flat shoe though it's like kind of like being barefoot yeah but i know because i've tried barefoot and i just can't like okay. right especially right now I don't know if it has something to do with the fat deposits on the bottom of my feet, but my feet actually like are sore. So sore. this is so I've trained in flat soled shoes for the last ten years. Like Vans, like Atomics, Chucks, okay. Chucks, uh, work boots. Stuff I don't like. I have a very flat foot. I have no arch. Yeah. Well, listen. In the last year, I think, or maybe six months ago, I tried barefoot, and now I actually love it. I, I don't do yeah. it. I don't do it every work. I don't do. It. I don't I do it every you know workout. The thing is, I don't train in fucking shorts either. So I'd be st- walking on my pants. <laughs> Wait, what does it matter if you don't wear shorts? You're worried about your calves looking too small? No, my fucking, I'd be stepping on my pants. Just wear shorts. <laughs> I don't wear shorts when I train ever. Why? You got good legs. It's just not, I, I like to stay covered up, bro. Listen, I, I, I wore, listen, I changed, I ch- changed my training. Didn't we talk, wait a minute. Didn't we, talk about your, didn't we talk about your pants? You're not supposed hold to be on. wearing those, bag, I, so those baggy Stop. fucking pants. I, I have recently because <laughs> of fucking you, you fashion police loser. I've worn more joggers in the past fucking three months than ever because every time I'm on here, you're like, you got to do something about your training attire. <laughs> your pants. Well, okay. Ask Nick, Nick. He's wearing those like big fucking bell bottomy fucking pants that like. Yeah, wear some big ass baggy gas pants. I've seen them. Is that is that cool or not? No, I don't wear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, better body, better bodies, man, better body, better bodies, better bodies, fucking joggers, nice and tapered. And then 
the gas, the baggy gas pants are cool, but just not, I don't know. I don't, I can't wear them in the gym. They're too baggy and they fucking get in the way. Well, you wear them every day. Like I can't do that. How many better, bo- you, you wear the better bodies ones now, don't you? Yeah, but I, I also, I like, sometimes I just like baggy fucking comfortable shit. Like Sean Clarita is like three foot five. He wears triple X's and everything. He does. That's very true. <laughs> I was gonna say something. I was gonna like say. some people like like I don't like put like I always pull my sleeves down. Some people like really short short um, t shirts. I like my t shirts all the way down to my elbow. I train in a hoodie. I get it, but sometimes I don't. But even if I wear pants, I want them to look nice. You're in the gym. I still want to look good. Oh, because you got that model thing in the back of your head, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that ego to hold, Nick. No, Nick. Nick, <laughs> ju- Nick just said the same thing. It, it's about. I just like I like tighter pants anyway when I train. I like to feel like everything's snug and in place. Forget. I it. mean, I, I wear the tights on my days a lot too. So. You're see, eight hundred pounds, Nick. You what? wear whatever, you can well, wear See, whatever guy's you want. gonna die doesn't freak out on you, but he freaks out on me when I say I wear tights. I, I think it's fucking stupid. <laughs> well, don't you say that when Nick said it? I I think it's I, Nick can wear whatever the fuck he wants, but he's a fucking. Oh. He, so Nick, <laughs> I'll still tell Nick I think it's fucking stupid. I don't understand. I don't. I don't need to see anybody's fucking fruit cup in the gym. Why are you know? looking at my dick if I'm training? It doesn't make sense. Just don't look at I, my dick. First of all, I, first of all, I'm not looking at anybody's fucking schmeckle in the gym. No, <laughs> I'm not paying attention to that. I don't even fucking check. I don't look at girls in the gym. I don't. Well, what are you worried about looking at if a guy's wearing tights? Uh, dude, there's a guy in my gym that wears tights. Yeah. and wears boxer briefs under it. And it looks like he's walking around Stop. with mashed potatoes. He looks like he has mashed potatoes dumped down his pants. That's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to wear – I wear the the Better Bodies uh, classic physique – under the classic physique posing trunks. They're like – I wear them as underwear. Yeah, yeah I have. I have a couple pairs of those. Yeah, so I wear those. They're super fucking comfortable. And then I wear my tights over time. Like, when it gets too high, I don't like it. Like, it feels weird. Like, my boxer briefs, I pull down, like, to mid-thigh, too. Oh, I don't like that. I like see, the fucking. I, that's probably see. I'm I'm up. Maybe it's a short man thing. I like things longer. I don't know. Nick, like, what kind of Nick? What kind of boxer briefs do you like? The shorter, long ones. Wow, this is fucking bodybuilder podcast. Are fucking what? <laughs> I go. I go commando. Commando. No, you don't. When you, yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do it, bro. I remember, I remember there was one time during prep, Matt asked me to oh pull. Oh, my God. And I was like, Nick, I'm never training legs with you, ever. <laughs> Bro, no, listen. So there was one time after a training session, Matt was like, all right, I want to look at you. Let's pose. I said, Bro, I can't pose. He's like, why not? I said, I don't got any underwear on. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? You know who doesn't wear underwear to ever, ever? I don't wear underwear. He's like, you don't get the rash between your thighs? I said, not really. Dude, you wear tights with no underwear? If if they're black, hey, aren't wait, I'm confused now. Aren't you supposed to not wear underwear with tights? No, that's you know, fucking I, disgusting. I, no, man, you gotta I'm wear a fucking. So lost. Okay. Isn't the tights supposed to act like a pair of underwear? Like it is. Wait, not my, not my I world. Legs, hold on, hold on. When I train legs, I put compression pants on tights, and then I put my pants on. If you're right. gonna put pants over top, I could see that. But if I'm gonna wear just tights. I don't want the outline of my dick and balls like that clear for everybody. That's why you shouldn't wear tights to the gym. No, you just, wear, no, you just wear some underwear and then you're good. Also, I but then you can see your underwear through the fucking. Nah, not, not the gasp. The gasp or or better bodies classic physique shorts are tight, and you put them on. You put the you can't even tell. I just don't. I think that is like. <laughs> I think if you're gonna wear the tights, pants. There's zero need to wear anything underneath. No, that's gross. Even girls, man. When girls wear tights, they wear thongs. Negative. Fucking, most, well, some. I shouldn't say most. Some Just girls wear thongs. Some girls don't. Well, skankers don't. I feel I can't leave that. I I don't want to. I don't want to train with no underwear on. It's fucking weird. But you want to train with tights on. Pretty with no underwear on. I, I feel tights like- feel tights feel good, man. When you're squatting, you fucking got tights Next, on. You know, I'm gonna be training with no underwear, with no shoes. Fucking John Metal style. <laughs> 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 no Nick, Nick, yeah. Nick, every every time a guy comes on the podcast says we fuck him up some more. He's gonna he's gonna start <laughs> every time this podcast and I go upstairs and fucking debate Nick, my life. Watch. What's that, what? Nick? His last leg day before Olympia is gonna wear a pair of tights now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wait a minute. I we have to solve this. Everybody watching, those of you who wear tights, 
do you wear fucking underwear with your tights or not? I no. guarantee most people are going to say no. That's fucking weird, man. I, I can't. Like, oh, what are you drinking? Uh, sugar-free Kool-Aid. See, if you were swiping me, we just <laughs> picture your nose. No, no, I was going to say that, and I thought, don't be a fucking liar. <laughs> see i can't you got to be real guy you can't fucking bullshit people they know i saw you go like this and i was like i know what he's doing yeah no i was gonna I do know, it I know, and, when, I, know, I know and when you asked me this is what i thought I'm like guys set me up say it's aminos and then i'm like no don't be an asshole see i would have said it's aminos i know you i know you because you're 25 you're like i gotta sell the product yeah right drinking my aminos um all right, our body. Hey, Nick, are you going to the Olympia? Yeah, I'll be there. When when do you get when do you get there? Are you, are you going for what? I don't know. I it's thought only it was... two for me. I would feel like a dickhead if I didn't go. Uh, Nick, do they have a? Does Raw have a booth there or no? No, I don't think so. I, which, it's literally like two hours from where we are, so we're just all gonna go. You're just going to watch, yeah, yeah. I'll just yeah. have to go early. Let me know because I'll be training up until. All right, I'll let you know. I, th I thought it. Sorry, I don't man. know. What I'm, I might go with Matt. I'm not sure, but I I'll thought about going with uh, Ben. Ben asked me to go because he's going to get a uh, Airbnb on like the Monday. You should go. Uh, Homewood Suites. It, I don't. I don't, I don't like going to fucking. I don't like going to a show if I don't have a booth to be at. I feel like a fucking weirdo walking around and shit. Why is it a weird? It's like really a year year. What, you, boy, this year is different. It'd be nice just to see everybody in one place, all your friends, man. This quarantine lockup shit. Like, yeah. you got the opportunity to fucking go be around your boys, man. Go. Yeah, I can, yeah come to, I can come to your room and bug you before you go on stage. Yeah, we'll do a podcast in my room. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, we'll do a pre-fucking Olympia podcast. Nick, you can walk around and be my co-host. With no underwear I'm and shoes. And no underwear. <laughs> you can only be my co-host if you wear underwear. You can't fucking <laughs> Bro, you'll never know if I have underwear on or not. If you're fucking wearing tights, I can tell you if you're do, wearing underwear. Everybody, everybody that wears I'm tights. I'm not going to wear at, tights if I'm your coat. At, oh, okay. at some point, if you don't wear underwear, you get fucking bat wings and you got to adjust. Wait a minute. Do you ever wear colored tights or just black? I wear colored. What color? Like red. So you're in red tights with no underwear. You, nobody can tell you're fucking not wearing underwear? It looks like a jalapeno. It looks, but I'm sure they do. They just don't say nothing. Yeah, I feel too self-conscious. What say to him? Big biceps, small dick? Like, who's going to say that? No, it's not It's not that because they're going to make fun of him. I just don't want – I feel self-conscious. I'm like, my shit's hanging out. But it's hanging out regardless, bro, whether you have – No, because if it's in those those classic physique shorts, it's like in a like, little package. It's like – See, notice how he just he just said what he has is a little package. He no, just, I said it's in a nice little <laughs> – Nice little compression. I would have been like, mine's in one of those, like, double XL boxes. That you yeah, yeah. yeah, we Yeah, we believe yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> all right who are some bodybuilders you wish you could stand next to on the olympia stage nick go first jay cutler i knew you're gonna fucking say that is <laughs> every fucking answer you give for a bodybuilder is jay cutler no matter jay what cutler. the question is jay cutler jay cutler all right that's fair what about you guy um so stand next to meaning compete again so i've stood Wait, are we talking about people competing now or just people in general? All time. Also, not like just in my class. Like all, any guys. All, all time, any class, who do you want to compete with? That's what I'm going to say. I know the cool thing to say is like Ronnie, but I don't want him to fucking dwarf me. So. Kevin with Ronnie. Yeah, why? What's he's your reason? He was one of my favorite. He had, in my, yeah. When I was growing up, I used to watch, he had a motivational video on, on YouTube. Yeah, it's still there, and it's got Creed in the background. And I used to watch that. He was just like, an awesome. he, he had. I think some, I know. I think I know the video too. I saw yeah. one. That's a he had that. He just had that intensity focus factor. Yeah. That in my, he was a great bodybuilder, but like there was just something about him in the gym training that just fucking lit a fire under me every time I watched it. And he was just like the fucking man, and like he was great at posing, like he was good at, at talking. He like he was just good. He was just good all around. But Jay's one of my closest fucking buddies, you know. But like, if I sit next to Jay, they'd be like, "Look at this fucking loser." I got uh, I got to compete against the guys I wanted to compete with. I competed against Dexter. I competed against Branch. Like I so like I want to show that Branch won 
the same day. I won a show. I won the New York Pro at the same time Dexter did, yeah. but like I didn't compete against them. Yeah, I was on in the same call out with them. Like, I think I would have liked to compete against Jay. Not that I could be in the same call out, but just see where you match. Just to see how far. I mean, I I mean, I would get killed. I'm not even saying I would compare, but Jay was Jay is somebody I admire. I competed with Flex. I competed, you know, I was on the same stage with Phil Heath, not in the same call out, but I don't think there's anybody. I re- Dorian Yates would probably be the only one. Not that I want to stand next to him. He would fucking make me look like a baby, but. I, I, I really liked Kevin Lebroni, obviously Franco Colombo, and I really liked Danny Padilla. I don't know if you remember who he is. Yeah, I know Danny Padilla. Danny Padilla was, I thought his physique was crazy. Yeah, it was. Um, and I, I really liked Lee Priest growing up because I could relate because he was so small. Lee yeah. Priest was. Lee was a freak, man. Lee was a freak. Those are the what guys about, that I, for me, those are my guys. Is there anybody else, Nick, or just Jay? Jay, and I would like to stay next to Phil Heath. Yeah. I think you'll have that shot next year, buddy. Don't worry about that. You think That's Phil will be right? You think Phil will be, Phil will be here next year? And I, I think Nick will be qualified his first show. Next year. No, I know, but do you think Phil will be here next year? Yes. I think Phil wins eight. He's going to want to win nine and fucking beat the all-time record, yeah. Doesn't he? He already has eight, doesn't he? Seven. Oh, he has seven. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's I mean, a good point. Um, okay. Have you or would you use a pump product before sex? Does Viagra count as a pump product? Uh, well, that's what I'm. At. I don't know. What I think he means like a. Su- I think he means like a supplement. Like, am I going to go downstairs and like take like Blackstone's hype before I? <laughs> well, I'm only saying this guy. I this no. guy's. Okay, this is not a this is not a product plug. This guy is one of our customers, and he already messaged me and told me that our pump product is giving him like help in the, help in the bedroom. <laughs> so, He's getting big boners. Nick, Wait, would you ever do that? Would you ever use a pump product for sex? If it worked, yeah. I mean, if it works, yeah. I just never thought about it though. You're gonna you're gonna try it, aren't you? I might actually. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna see if it works. Uh, who would win in a game of chess? Someone that can see the future or someone that can read minds? What the read fuck? You, that- if you read somebody's mind, you know what they're going to do before they do it. <laughs> Look at Nick's confused. <laughs> no, I would say I would say read somebody's mind because you would know what they're going to do before it happens. Reading the future is fucking yeah, yeah. but it's you're the same one step, thing. You're it's one step ahead if you if you can read their mind. No, because you're one step ahead if you can see the future. Who wins? The guy that can read the mind, because you no. know what he's going to do before he does it. No. What Fuhai, you just like to fuck. Fuhai just likes to go against me to get me riled up. That's the only reason why he fucking. He, and he has never agreed with me on one thing I've said on this fucking podcast. Well, uh, if you haven't listen, I think people who watch this podcast understand. I don't fucking agree with anybody. Because I know you know. That's what makes the podcast good. If all of us I'm just a- said, if all of us just said future and moved on, it would be boring as fuck. But True. there's no okay. It, you really think? Are you being honest? Yes. You really think future is better than seeing reading I'm, somebody's? I'm picking yes. future. I think. Okay, oh, explain think, to me. All right, all right, all right. Just explain to me your thought process and why. Okay, if I can see the future, I know what you're going to do. If I can read your mind, I can know what you're going to do before it happens. It's, it's the same thing. So it's then not, we're both idiots and we're arguing no point. There's no winner. Okay. It's a fucking dumb question in general. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you're such a fucking bully. I love Nick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can wake up tomorrow as the rock or you could be mr olympia mr the olympia the rock yeah what do you mean eh? uh when in the olympia ain't gonna fucking it, winning in the olympia i'll give you i'll give you a title a trophy and a place in history being the rock will mean you your kids, your kids' kids, your kids' kids' kids, your kids' kids' kids', kids, kids your family, and it's set for fucking life. Not to mention the place in history. All right, fine. I picked the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the rock and be fucking. Oh, Nick, you got to fight harder, man. You can't just give up your position that easily. No, because you're right. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's, me, me and Florida are like spatulas when it comes to Nick. He's very <laughs> easy to flip. Uh, would you? Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> read it anyway now i want to know no oh, because he's just co- he's just copying another thing we did he's uh, copying he's copying a question me and me and luke did but he changed the animals it's fucking dumb was this the duck and the bear 
Yeah. A bunch of little yeah. dots. Yeah, he used he used gorillas and chickens. I'm like, it's the same question. <laughs> um how was how has trying out some SST met training methods gone for you? Uh, extra pumps, strength. Have you guys done any SST stuff like the Patrick I don't Tour know stuff? What SST stands for. It's so kind of like uh, I don't know, sarcoplasmic fucking strength training. I don't know. Why does everybody have acronyms for shit nowadays? It's basically he does a lot of cluster sets, a lot of drop sets, a lot of shit like that. Like what? cluster sets. Like what Patrick Tour's training system is based on is like. Isn't that Fortitude training the same thing? Does Scott Stevenson does he does that too? I'm sure there's a lot of people that do a lot of the same stuff, but there's more to it than that. So I don't. I don't want to try and dumb it down. I mean, Patrick has a whole system, so I'm not even. I think this question was directed at the guys on the podcast. Is all of them are trained by Patrick? So we'll just skip over this one. And you do his training though, right? I've done it a few times. I like it. It's good. I don't think it's. I didn't like it as much for arms stuff like that. I feel like it's too much. I like I like when I'm doing like arms and shit. I like doing moderate weight, more straight sets, and yeah. very f- short rest periods. I don't like. Yeah. I'm not trying to do arms for strength. You know what I mean? Like it's different. Yeah. So like when I'm doing arms or shoulders, I like doing my own shit. I like doing Patrick's stuff. Sometimes I do legs or back and stuff like that. All right. Okay. I, I hate I hate training arms. Yeah, so do I. But if I if I am going to train arms, I've noticed I get more out of it when I do moderate weight, okay, short rest periods, and higher rep, higher rep ranges like eight to fifteen. Yeah. So when I used to go heavy on arms, all I did was fuck up my bicep tendons and my tricep tendons. Did, did, did you see it? Did you see, elbows would hurt. Everything would hurt. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. you see the wrestling thing that I did? Mm. Is that the thing with the? Uh, with um with pj yeah yeah did you watch the final thing no i don't think i did bro if if you want to if you want to pull it up it was four and a half it was one of the hardest things i've ever done and one of the probably funnest things but when i tell you it you could just you go just to the match part i i have a complete new respect if um for fucking wrestlers because we we filmed that for four and a half hours and it was an eight minute total fucking like thing my fucking arms were so fucking sore from grabbing and like throwing it but it was out of everything i've done in bodybuilding i can literally say that was one of the most funnest experiences i've ever had all right i'm going to show everybody but this does not mean anybody should buy blackstone products they should still buy hostile products i'm just joking I'm just, products i thought they were great i'm just joking no 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 not this not this go no no this isn't it go to youtube i'll go to youtube yeah. Cool. All right. I'll scroll through it. Where am I going? What what minute? Oh, stop. You going? Do I need volume? I mean, it's it's better with volume, but you don't need. It. <laughs> it's fucking BJ. <laughs> Keep going. Right here from the CEO and president of Blackstone. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. He, uh, One second. Came in around money. Guy looks badass. Black Stone Labs, and uh, he's got all the cars and Ferraris. You know what I'm saying? And he got the fancy house and all the clothes and the watches. And yeah, I'm just a little guy from, you know, Jersey Italian boy. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the is your Blackstone Labs. I, I, I watch this every night because it's, it's actually my buddy watching. He goes, "This was better than WWE." Fuck! I got an ad. Look, you kept scrolling like a twat. What is going on right now? What's with my fucking black internet? Awesome. All right. Yeah. Out of Danbury, Connecticut. <laughs> oh, watch my hops here, bro. LBR, it has all come down to this. Your official main event for the Blackstone Lab. I don't even understand how to get more intense. Watch this, dude. You're going to die. That was very underway. CEO match. Out of me. 
as you pointed out, we are his former best friend. As these two going back and forth here in the side of the shots, you can see how personal this is. Absolutely. Exchanging blows in the middle of the ring. This, this, uh, oh, you missed the hard part. Taking that spear oh. sucks. Right here. Exchanging blows in the middle of the ring with such hard all right, all right, all right. That, it was fun, bro. It was fun as fuck. How long did that fucking take you to make? Four and a half hours of filming. Holy fuck, man. It was like you had to learn a script. I wouldn't have done that shit. You look like you fucking got injured. Uh, you know what's funny? People like look at me. And they think that. Remember, I I skateboarded. I fucking still snowboard. I fucking um, I I still do shit. Like I, I'm very athletic. Like people think that yeah, I just yeah, yeah. out. Like my yeah. tendons and joints. Like I can still sprint. I can still jump. Even though with my back, like I got in that ring, it was like I've been doing it for twenty years. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't fucking take the chance, but I can't. I don't. I don't do any of that other shit. So. Are you somebody um, like that? I know, like, I remember Generation Iron Me, like, a, a movie. It, like, it was, the, I forget what it was called, but Branch was in it. Uh, Bukowski was in it, and Bukowski was saying stuff about, like, hey, well, he wouldn't do any, like, stuff because he was afraid to get, and remember when Branch goes flying off the horse? Yeah, it, yeah. Like, do, do you not do things specifically because of bodybuilding? Like, there's a lot I still do that I probably shouldn't because I could get injured, but, like, I don't really stop living my life because of bodybuilding. I think it's a size difference, though, and that's not to like. There's no offense, like, no, but you're. I, I think. Yeah, my ass ain't snowboarding. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I used to ski. Oh, I, 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 like I used to ski and shit. I can't fucking do any of that shit no more, man. Like cause everything's so. I don't know if it's because I don't stretch or don't do yoga or whatever, but I remember trying to ride a motorcycle once, and I think I started to tip it, so I put my leg out, and I like fucking had a fucking uh, adductor injury for like three weeks afterwards. Like just little things. Every every time I do something really little, I remember trying to fuck around on a trampoline once, and I fucking did something to my groin. Like it's always something like, like stupid. Yeah, like a, like a nagging injury. You're not supposed to be doing dumb shit when you've maxed out your physique. Yeah, yeah. You know, like being 280 pounds and doing fucking anything is not. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, would you rather put a toothpick under your big toe? Or kick the wall as hard as you can, or have a tooth pulled with no aesthetic anesthetic. Toothpick. I'd have the tooth pulled. Who gives a shit? Okay. Toothpick under your toenail? Toenail? Yeah. Or toe. Oh no, it says under your big toe. Sorry. Okay, so that's yeah. It was toenail. I would change it. Big toe, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna change it to toenail. That sounds way worse. But a tooth pulled, you have a permanent hole. Yeah, but if it's like back here, no one will see it. But see, now we're getting into logistics now. Really? <laughs> it didn't say it couldn't pick the tooth. <laughs> what about you, Nick? You look confused. On toothpick. Toothpick under your big toenail. Yeah, I'm going toothpick. That's fucking hardcore. Yeah, tooth pull just sounds way too intense. And kicking the walls all my toes, so that's no fun. Yeah, kicking the walls as hard as you can doesn't sound like fun either. It's not fun, but I feel like I can tolerate that more than you ripping a tooth out of my mouth. Yeah, but remember your dad used to like wrap a fucking string around your yeah, tooth. That's when your tooth was fucking hanging on a thread, not There's when it was little... solid in there when you were an adult. <laughs> <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to fucking convince you to change it. <laughs> as a kid, is almost falling out. Do you hear the manipulation of this podcast? <laughs> that's your shit. Shut up. Let me change Nick's mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can let you do it on some things. This is just your <laughs> theory behind your thought process on this one was bad. Who who would have a better career transition? A bodybuilder moving to strongman or a strongman moving to bodybuilding? Strongman moving to bodybuilding. Yeah, I think so too. See, I agree, I agree. with you. Yeah. Uh what are what feet are you most proud of, bodybuilding or otherwise? I'm sorry. What's the most, what's the, like, the, what feat, that you, like, what thing have you done in your life that you're most proud of, bodybuilding or, or otherwise? Pro card. That's a good one. What about you, guy? 
one thing I, that I, I, I would just be considered one thing that I'm able to make a living off of being a bodybuilder. Yeah. That's so fucking broad, though. Okay. <laughs> but a lot of people can't make a living off of being a bodybuilder. I know, but you're like, what are you most proud of? You're like, my whole life. No, my... I yeah. guess a show I'm proud of or like an accomplishment or like... Yeah, a feat. Like something you've done. Like something you've achieved. I, something you completed. The one... I... I I'm gonna go with Nick. The one, my one, the one of the most important shows in my life was. At, you know what? The one of the most important thing, the feat for me, honestly, was taking second place to Jose in 2007 at nationals. He was taking second to Jose. Showed me how to be a champion because it it that I, I use the term. You have to be a good champion in order to be. You have to be a great, a good loser. loser. Champion. Yeah. And, and I and that year, I remember being so upset that I didn't turn pro. But I didn't. I wasn't ready, and there was a lot of things I didn't learn. So I think taking second to 2007 was a very important feat in my career because it taught me a lot. I like that. Um, I can't decide if mine's my first pro win or my current home that I live in. Because buying my buying this house was like. Was it a byproduct of bodybuilding? Yeah, of course. Of course, this bodybuilding has given me everything. I say that all the time. Uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, so would you technically financially. Say, would you have been able to buy the house if it wasn't for bodybuilding and potentially winning that show? Yes. I know one thing for sure. I'm a fucking really driven person. So yeah. if I wasn't good at bodybuilding, I would be good at something else. I would, have, I would be in this position. No matter what. No matter what. I would have just had found a different avenue to do it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think winning my, winning my first show was really fucking emotional because it took me. Was that in Dallas? Orlando. Orlando. It was it Europa, right? Yeah, Dallas was. I took second to Branch in Dallas in fourteen. That was. Uh, I won that. I won that show that year. You won the two twelve with that show. Yeah. Oh wow. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Good. Yeah. No. Um. The the. The Dallas, the Europa, the, the show I won, the first show I won was probably the most emotional that stands out in my mind. But this home is kind of like, you know how everybody has a definition of success in their mind? Yeah. When I bought this home, I was like, I think I'm finally, I finally feel successful. Yeah. So. I like, never really feel fully satisfied because like I constantly doing stuff to my house because I never feel satisfied. My house is being it's torn apart at the moment. Yeah, my house getting <laughs> yeah. no i sad i think satisfied is not the right i don't think i'll ever be satisfied i think it's just the type of person i am but you know there's you know how in your life i don't know if you're like this but i have like benchmarks in my life that i've by the time you're this you want that but yeah like i i made them i made them up in my head when i was like 15 i was like when i'm 20 i'm 25 i want to be like this when i'm 30 i want to be like this 35 40 blah 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 right and i always had a definition of what success was so I think when I bought this house, I'm like, okay, I got this house now. I'm married. I have a couple cars. I'm like, I think, and I'm doing what I love. I think this is now the puzzle is kind of complete. So. I always told myself I would never buy a really nice car until I had a really nice house. I, I didn't buy nice, ha nice cars before buying anybody that has a really nice car before they own a house. I in my, in, in my head doesn't have, doesn't have their, their things in, in order. Just me. So I never, like my, my, I've had, you know, when I was married, I went to townhouse and then I, you know, rented and then found this house and I like my car, like I never got a nice car until I had a, a nice house. Yeah. I, I did the opposite. I had nice cars like way back yeah. and not, not like super, super nice, but yeah, I wasn't, I, you know, some people are smart with their money. They can work like half as hard and, and have twice as much. Yeah. And other people have to like work twice as hard because they just don't know how to spend their money. Yeah. That's me. Oh. Like, do you, do you ever like, like, do you have a thing in your, like, I have a place in my house that I, I like, I have a lot of money stashed. Like when I ever have lose money, I have a box that I'm constantly throwing money in. No, I don't. Um, have that. I have a bank account. I, I, I always, I, 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 always, <laughs> well, no, I have a bank. I, have money in it. I don't, you can't do nothing. You can't do nothing with cash. I ever need to grab money and grab a bag and go. For however long I can do it without. I know, I know what you're saying, but we're at a, we live in a position, and we live at a point in our lives now where you can't do fuck all with a lot of cash. If I walk into a place with more than a thousand dollars, 
I don't know about, I don't know about the U S but in Canada, if I walk into like, if I walk into a car dealership and I'm like, here's $30,000, I want to buy that car. They're like, where the fuck did you get this money? No, it ain't like that around here like that. It's like that here. You can't buy shit. If you have, I think here, like if you have more than, I think it's 10,000 is the cap. If you go in to buy something with more than 10 grand, they're like, where'd you get the money from? And like, if you can't, like you can't, you can't like they, they watch deposits over 10,000. So like most people that, like, yeah, yeah. We'll deposit like 9,999. That's right. Nine. That's right. Like, we do that here now, too. Like, I've walked into places with like a lot of money and been like, I want to buy that. In cash. Depends on the thing. Like if I go buy my wife a purse for 2,500 bucks, I can pay cash. But if I go buy a car, they're going to be like, where'd the money come from? Huh. Right. So it's like, it depends on the amount and it depends what you're buying. Like when I got, I got the tire and wheel package on my fucking car. And I was like, how much? And they were, it was like X amount of thousands. And I was like, yeah here yeah i think yeah maybe this is only a part of it yeah i don't know i, I just anyway i don't have a lot of, i don't have a lot of cash stashed i don't i, I don't trust people I, like my house can get robbed all my money gets stolen fuck it nah, um, nobody's gonna steal a 500 pound safe yeah that's true too <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> anyway what how do we get down this fucking road we were talking about success oh we were yeah. talking about spending money and i said i'm the kind of person that like I dig myself a hole and then I find a way to get out of it. Does that make sense? It's almost like the chase. Yeah. It's like, I need that chase. It's like, it's like if I want something, I'll go get it somehow, either with credit or whatever the fuck I have to, however I have to get it, I'll get it. Figure out how to finance it later. Yeah. And then I will work harder to get myself back up on, onto yeah. to normal. Right. It's kind of like a backwards ass way of doing things, but. But if it works for you, it works um this is actually an important bodybuilding question if you're getting higher in body fat during a bulk but still seeing good gains and strength gains would you keep bulking nick i mean how fat are you well i don't know he's saying higher body fat let's assume he's 13 to 15 percent body fat i wouldn't go much higher than that is 15 like your limit yeah i, I mean i don't like to look like a fat slob in the off season but what if you're still making good gains? Odds are, if you're putting on body fat and making good gains, you could probably lower the food a little bit and still make the same good gains. Okay. What do you think, guy? Um, I, I, you're putting I, on body fat that like quickly. I feel like you're just eating more than what you need. Yeah. If yeah. You're, I mean, if you're making gains, that's great. But if you're if if the gain to fat ratio is is substantially high i think you need to cut back your calories a little bit and find a more balanced diet yeah i think i could agree with that i mean personally i've done the i've done the kind of off season where i was like i don't care how fat i get as long as i'm getting stronger and bigger see i don't I, nick i, I don't know or fuad i am literally my strongest like four weeks out from a show i get like that too but that's why i always get injured like right now i'm still strong like i'm uh, nick nick's like strong for me but yeah for me I, like mm -hmm. my numbers yeah. Or, I mean, obviously, two and a half weeks out, they're not as great. But two weeks ago, my numbers were just as high as they were fucking in my off season. I'm the um, same. I'm the same way, guy. Like, but that's why I always get injured at the end of my preps because I get like my strength will go like this, all the way to like three weeks, and then it like dips at the end. So I'm like, I'm in the same boat you are. Like, I have the same problem. But I'm talking about a consistent gain. Like, if I'm in the off season, I could feel myself benching also, more. And also, the heavier you get if you're getting obviously bodybuilding in your heart and like there's going to be an overabundance of something, whether it's muscle and if you're putting on mu a lot of muscle and a lot of fat, like what's the fucking risk to reward here? It's like, it's, you know, you, you got to fucking, you got to, got to give in with one of them. And if that means you can gain muscle and cut back the calories a little bit and lose a little body fat, that's healthier than continuing to blow up because it's more of a stress on your heart. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. I, I don't, I guess I should factor in, the amount of body fat. I think 15 is probably the max for me too. High. It's that should be yeah. like I think average for a male is 22 for us. 15 is high. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, any plans to have guy on again? Fuad. Hey, I got there, there you go. Uh, someone started a petition to get Fuad Abiyat at the 2021 Olympia so he can retire there. Yeah. You guys should do that for me. We don't want to go there right now. Post it. <laughs> Are you, are, you, are, you real, are you get you me real, a get me a special invite to the 2021 olympia so i can retire there you really think you're never going to compete again honestly and 
It's going to, honestly, this is what I tell people now, because they ask me that all the time. My health will dictate exactly what I do. So, I'm, your, I'm, so what's that guy? That's how it should always be. Well, no, but I mean, I'm very, very, like, tar- it's very targeted now. Like, I'm getting blood work every month. Yeah. So every time I get blood work, as long as the trend keeps going, because it's been going up now. So as long as it keeps going up, I will continue to bodybuild. But if I see a dip once, that's it. I'm just going to be like, okay, my body can't handle it. Because if I start getting into like back on a cycle and stuff, and all of a sudden it takes a dip, then I know it's just not in it for me, right? But if I can get back on a cycle and I have all my health shit done and I'm on this medication I'm taking and my uh, kidney levels keep going up in the right direction, then I will keep going. So it just depends on how the blood works go. Awesome. Um, Let's see you again up there. If you had to choose, pee with a boner for the rest of your life or eat rice with no utensils forever? Eat rice with no utensils forever. With a boner? Is that what you said? Yes. <laughs> Nick, Nick can, I, can I interrupt you for a second? Nick, you're my favorite guest I ever had on the show. Because he's I, like... <laughs> it just have a fa- you're my fucking fit. You're like a little kid. You know that you're like, you're like a fucking ten year old <laughs> in a three hundred pound man's body. It's fucking awesome. Um, <laughs> okay. <Boner>. So, <laughs> all right. So which one? Pee with a boner or eat utensils with no eat rice with no utensils for the rest of your life? I'm peeing with a boner. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I wake up with a boner every morning and pee with a boner. It's one time a day. You pee 30 times a day. Try doing that with a fucking rock solid schmeckle every time. You know what? I'll try it tomorrow. Let you know how it goes. You're going to get a boner on purpose every time you got to pee? Yep. And I'm going to pee. I want to pick up every single picture. Put it in your your stories every time you piss. Peeing with a boner. (laughs) Do it. You ever try? Put that on a shirt. You ever try? <laughs> have you, Nick, have you fucked with a boner before? Have I fucked with a boner? Isn't that how you're supposed to fuck? No, fight? sorry. I meant fucked with a piss boner. What? I don't know what you guys do. I met with, I I with a pee boner. I met with a pee boner. You know how you get pee boners in the morning? I met with a pee boner. Oh, yeah. Every every morning. I wake up with a boner. When my girl's there, I fuck her. I go pee. But doesn't sex- I fuck her. I go pee. That was so Italian. <laughs> But doesn't He's like, how yeah, Italian was that? <laughs> I fuck guy go pee. But doesn't sex sex sucks with a pee boner though? We'll see when I wake up and I have to pee. When I fuck her, that pee feeling kind of goes away until you know, I'm done because this. you're kind of pissed. You don't the piss pee it. back even stronger. And I'm like, oh shit, I really gotta pee now. You don't pee in her, do you? No, not in her. Maybe on her, but not in her. <laughs> you pee on her. Tell you that. Can we fucking slow down? Wait a minute. You peed on her? I have, yeah. Like on the bed or like in the shower? I don't know. In the shower. I'm not that fucking gross. <laughs> I do some gross it's shit. It's a lot. So it's like, <laughs> hey, you pissed on her? He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 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 like it's an, like a regular Tuesday. I pee on her. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you said it like I was crazy for asking. <laughs> like I was out of line. You're like, what do you mean? It's fucking normal. Not like not every day. <laughs> That's normal shit, man. All right. Okay. No, I can't what? I can't fuck with a pee boner. I can't stand it. It sucks. All I can think of the whole time is I gotta piss. Yeah, and you can't control it too. I can control it, but I just... It after, after sex, it's like fucking eight... It's like a going to hell. First of all, when you blow your load, it's not even enjoyable because you're like... It's like not the same thing. It's like not... It's not as enjoyable. It's not as good. You just want to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us go to the bathroom. Nick's like, stay there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Would you swap your bodybuilding career for three Mr. Olympia wins... But everyone hates you and is disgusted by you. They hate you so much they would spit on you on the street. Well, this is not like an easy question to answer, but Nick, go ahead. Yeah, I probably would. Yeah, I probably would too. I probably I would. Actually, what am I talking? <laughs> I would not. I'm gonna go with I would not. Yeah, I don't think I, I want to be I, I love the fans in the stage. Now he tells they're getting spit on the side. He's like, Yeah, sign me up. But it's it's like one point two million dollars. 
Okay, but that's is is one point two million dollars more than what you had made. I couldn't I couldn't handle the the spitting on the street part. That would be too much for me. Wait, wait, there. That's not a figure of speech. They're legit spitting on you. He said they would spit on you in the street. Oh no, that's insane. Someone spits on me, they're going down. <laughs> well, the answer is you wouldn't do it. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think. Well, I'm doing if it. I get spit on, I'm, I, it's not going to go very well. And if everyone spits on me. <laughs> You against the world? Yeah, fuck that. I'm staying who I am. <laughs> uh, would you rather fight two rounds with Francis and Ganu or one round with Mike Tyson? Fuck you know, me. I'm going one round with Mike Tyson. You're fucking high. I think after well, seeing the most the other night, they, yeah. Roy Jones was hugging him. That's why he was. <laughs> That motherfucker still swings like fucking lightning, bro. No, guy, I don't. guy, do you know who Francis Ngannou is? I don't care, don't need to, but I'll take fucking them over Tyson. I think if you saw Francis Ngannou's knockouts, you'd change your mind. Nah. Dude, I, you like you know why? I remember one thing I remember about Mike Tyson growing up. They said they compared getting hit by him with putting a phone book to your face and having Frank Thomas swing the bat as hard as he could. I'm yeah. good. But that was him 30 years ago. Bro, you're telling me he wasn't swinging hard as fuck the other night? See, that uh, guy years ago. Body. Do, you watch any, do you watch any UFC? Do you, you, you know who Alistair Overeem yes. is? Yes. Okay, Francis Ngannou punched Alistair Overeem's head off his shoulders. Like, that's how hard this guy punches. It's okay, Tyson wait, 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 wait. has gloves on. Wait a minute. A lot bigger than MMA. I don't mean I literally. It's a figure of speech, Nick. I don't mean literally punch his oh, head off his shoulders. It's not the head of the the video of that shit. I don't mean like it really came off. I, it's on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, the other, it, I wasn't impressed with the fight the other night. I wasn't impressed either because Jones was holding him, but Tyson was swinging hard, bro. He hit him with some really hard body shots. Hard. That was – yeah, those were impressive. I would be hugging him too if I fuck was yeah. in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, we'll do a couple more. Would you rather constantly dry heave or protein fart while you fucking your girl? Huh? I don't know how those two are mixed. I'd rather fart. I hate throwing up. I hate doing like I have to throw up. <laughs> Yeah, but protein farts are horrible. You'd rather walk around and go, Bleh. Bleh. Yeah, like, I don't, how, how often are you dry heaving? That's the question. Isn't it, isn't it when you're fucking your girl? Well, you know, I'm going to pick the protein farts. because Oh, he's in, saying like while you're fucking. I get it. Okay, so would you rather dry heave while you're fucking or protein fart while you're fucking? I'd fart because I oh, just... they're both while fucking? Yeah, they're both while fucking. Who's going to fuck you if you, can, if you continually act like you're going to throw up while you're banging them? <laughs> What girl is going to be like, this pussy jerk when you're like, <laughs> Ew, yeah. bro. Yeah, but yeah. What, what girl is going to fuck you if you fart when you're banging her? Bro, just put some fucking air fresheners in the room. You'd be good. Yeah, I'm going to pick the protein farts. You know how many farts I blamed on my dogs? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that, too. I've Everybody's done that too. on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Storm, what the fuck? God, she farted again. Meanwhile, it's like, bro. All right. One more, one more question and we'll go. Make it a good one. Okay, I'm gonna. F would you rather have really noticeable bo every time you train, or really bad breath every time you met with fans or had a business meeting? It sounds that's like one of my encounters every day with somebody. That's a tough one. That's a toughie. I can't have bo while I train, man. It's really like that's a. I have yeah, a, I don't want to have bad breath when I'm meeting fans. You imagine. I, I feel like half the gym already fucking stinks. Okay, wait a minute. This is the thing. If I have bad breath when I'm meeting fans, they probably have bad breath too because they've been drinking protein shakes and eating protein bars the whole time at an expo. So it's like not that bad, right? You're like, oh, yeah, bad breath. Yeah, I was eating protein bars too. You're all good. But if you stink in the fucking gym, that's every day you're going to stink in the gym. Well, how bad is the stink on a scale from one to 10? I can't handle any stink. I shower before I go to the gym. Oh, uh, you want to? Yeah, I can't stink. I can't. I can't do it. So do you like, actually smell like shit? <laughs> my wife has told me in the 13 years we've been married, I've smelled bad twice. So it's a thing Does that for give me. You a complex? That's a no, I feel good about that. I think that's a good record. 
I think smelling bad twice in 13 years is good. Is it, is it, is it BO only at the gym and bad breath only with fans? I think so. Yes. Then I would take the bad breath. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'd rather be known as the guy that's that has shitty breath than the guy that stinks at like his yeah. body. Yeah. Yeah. I know people with bad breath. I don't hate them. But guys with BO at the gym, I can't fucking stand those people. Come to my gym. <laughs> really? Is it bad? Yeah. I actually, a couple years ago, and I, I verbatim is what I said, it, this guy was so fucking bad. I pulled him aside. I said, bro, listen. I said, I'm not trying to be a dick. I go, I don't know what you do before you come to the gym. I said, I don't know if you work like a, a very extensive job or do manual labor. I'm like, but you got to be a little more conscious of your daily hygiene. I go, could you smell really bad? You didn't I go, do that. I, right. I forgot. And, you could, shit. and I go, I go, a lot, I go, a lot of people are complaining. I go, because I was like, you're um, you, the gym. Nick, you've been to my gym. You know, when you go around the corner where the leg room's kind of segregated, where yeah, the, yeah, yeah. he was back there and it was stinking up. And I go, everybody back. That- yeah. He it was that bad. The whole entire back was cleared. And I go, everybody left back here because it, it smells that bad. I'm like, you got to be a little more conscious of your hygiene when you come to the gym, bro. I'm like, it's yeah. that. He's like, really? What did he, say? Ah. he stunk. So he was like, really? I go, yeah. He's like, do you want me to leave? I said, bro, I'm not kicking you out of the gym. I said, just, I go, just when you come, I was like, spray cologne, put extra deodorant on. I go, I don't know if you're wearing the same shirt you wore all day. I was like, but you got to do something. I was like, it's really bad. Yeah. You, know, you know, a lot of that time, a lot of times it's what people eat. You know that, right? A lot but, of times it's garlic. Or yeah. Like, people eat a lot of garlic. That's why I don't, you know what? This is I, how, I haven't, I, I haven't had garlic because I had garlic. They were putting garlic on my food earlier in my yeah. prep. And I could fucking, it, that my scent with garlic is so strong right now. Yeah. Everything to me smells like garlic. I, it's disgusting. Yeah. I, I have such a phobia of stinking at the gym that I fucking don't put onions or garlic on any of my food. No, I don't. I don't. Do I don't any. like my seasoning is like salt and pepper. Yeah. That's what I put on everything. Cause I'm like, cause I'm, when I started working with this meal prep company I'm working with now, my chicken came and it had garlic all over it. And I'm like, first of all, it caused heartburn because I don't eat it enough. So all of it, it just fucked me up on automatically. And then I noticed all my clothes stunk. Yeah. So I was like, no, I'm like, cut that shit out. No more. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So we're going with the BO. We're going with the bad breath. Yeah. Bad I, breath. I think you can find a better last question other than that. All right. Yeah. Should we take a, a serious one or no? Uh, well, yeah. Make it fucking, make it a good one. Just make it good, man. So we have to think a little. What's your thoughts or opinion on a coach who uses if it fits your macros method for bodybuilding instead of a set proper meal plan? If it fits your macros, fired. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, wait. Okay, can we actually talk about what if it fits your macros is? Because it's supposed to be set on a set number of protein, carbs, and fats. So it can work. One right, like McDonald's and all that shit. As long as it's in your fit your macros. No, well, well, yes and no, but it's I like think, marketing, bro. I think you mean more like if it's your calories, that's different. But if it's your macros, is like if I want to switch the fat from butter for the fat from peanut butter, it's okay, or vice versa. I don't think that's the same. Uh, what do you mean? I think you can still look good and do that. I, I don't think you can or can't. I think it's a stupid fucking method. <laughs> I think it's a good method for the average person. Not for bodybuilding. That's what the question was about bodybuilding. Oh, that's right. He asked about bodybuilding. I like a set plan. See, you're thinking now. Okay, so when I started bodybuilding, I was so against this diet that I was like, this is, I was like set, dead set again. I'm like, you guys are fucking idiots. This is not the same. But now, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, it can work. I don't think it can work for body. I don't think it works for bodybuilding. I think for everyday person, you've knocked the rat out of the park again. But I don't think for bodybuilding again. I think in order to be consistent in bodybuilding, dieting or pre-contest, or, or dieting or off-season, you have to be more consistent. And I think constantly swapping foods in and out, it doesn't help your body gain or lose. I could, like when you diet, you have to be at a consistent deficit. So if you're constantly swapping different foods in and out. With but you're still at a deficit. That's the thing. You're still in a deficit. Yeah, but you're with different foods and how. how yeah, but di- it's like this. It's like this. Imagine you're eating chicken, oh. rice, and uh, avocado for like one meal, right? And instead, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna have steak and rice for this meal, and I'm not gonna have the avocado because there's fat in the steak. That would mind fuck me. I would never do it. Why? I, I, I you're still gonna, you're still gonna look great. 
I wouldn't do that pre-contest either. I know that I know the and before anybody says anything, I know the fats from the avocado and the and the steak are not the same, but just strictly sink, speaking as a macro. Yeah, I think it's fine, but digestibility wise and how your body processes that food compared to the other food is different, which is why I would stay more consistent. Your body doesn't process all the food the same. So we're just no, but like I've worked, listen, I worked with John for a really long time. And we basically do a version of if it fits your macros for all my shows, which is basically like, if I don't want to eat cream of rice, I can eat oatmeal. If I don't want, if I don't want to eat egg whites, I can eat chicken. Okay, I'm going to question, how often did you really swap that out? Lots. Really? Well, like this, I would do cream of rice for a week. And if I got sick of it, I would switch to oatmeal for a week. Yeah, I stay consistent throughout. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like if I constantly throw things in and out, then it, my, it, my body does this. I think if you're, okay, I guess I'm, this is where I stand on if it fits your macros. Within a select group of bodybuilding foods, I think it's okay. I can, okay, I will, if, if you want to reword it to that, then I can yeah. say I'm not working. I wouldn't, but I, I guess so like, I, I, I could be like eight ounces of chicken, two cups of rice and avocado, or I could have two slices of pizza. No, have, like, oh, no, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't agree with that. that I'm not gonna, that's what real if it's your macro, macro is. Yeah, but if you if you do it properly, it's really hard to match the macros with bad food. I agree, but a lot of if it, if it picks your macros. People love that shit. No, 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 but wait a minute. This is the problem. I think people do – people mistake if it fits your macros with if it fits your calories. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, well, I didn't eat my first three meals, so that means I can have a pizza. That's not well, the diet. That's not how the diet works. No, but that's how most people interpret it. Okay, but we're talking about what it's supposed to be, not what the fucking they do. So if it fits your macros the way it's supposed to be done, tells you you're supposed to eat a gram and a half per pound of protein. And you're supposed to eat whatever per pound of carbs and whatever per pound of fat. So you can't just switch chicken, rice, avocado for I pizza. The word is consistency. And I think when you're the more inconsistent you are, the worse off you are. I think the more consistent you are with the same foods, the better off you are. I agree. Okay, well, I'm going to say this. I'm just arguing for the sake of arguing because in my diets. Really shocker. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I will say that I think if you – if you take the select bodybuilding foods that we all eat, right? Chicken steak, steak chicken steak, steak, fish, steak, egg. Yeah. Like all, you know, you know, the, you know, the fucking. Those sandwich. are all interchangeable to an extent. Those, yes. I think whether you're dieting or not, at least for me anyway, I've gotten shredded. I've gotten big, both like switching them all around. It doesn't matter for me. Like as long as it's the, the plan is still the same numbers. I can switch those select foods around and be okay and still look the I same. Guess. I guess because I've never had a coach that did that. I've always had a coach that's been eating your meals, eat them, that I just am so fucking like programmed that this, these are your meals and this is when you eat them and that's that. Do you think there'd be a big difference? Okay, like I, I know there's, there's fiber and oatmeal and things like that, but do you think there would be a very big difference in your muscular look or gain or fat loss if you ate 80 grams of cream of rice or 70 grams of oatmeal? Whatever the, whatever the exact Mac, whatever the exact. Like now if you're asking me like oatmeal makes me more bloated than cream rice. So you asked me if, if, if all, if all outside stimuli are exactly the same, like I digested the same. I, like, yeah. Yeah. Let's say you, let's say when you ate oatmeal, you felt fine. Okay. And when you ate, and you ate cream rice, you felt fine. Okay. Would it, do I, what in the question was, what would it affect me? How is it going to make any difference when you get. It probably, get, it probably wouldn't mentally. It, in my head, it, it would, but yeah. realistically, it probably wouldn't. But just to not have the stress, I wouldn't do it, if that makes sense. That does make 100% sense. I, I actually said this in one of my videos because I think um, Greg Doucette made a video about Patrick Moore and how Patrick Moore was eating just chicken and rice every day. Uh -huh. and He didn't have to, and he can do this other diet. And I think Greg's probably right. There is probably a way to do it his way. But I said in my video that I like just knowing yes these are the five fucking foods i eat every day yeah. it makes things easy for me it makes things when i change things it's easy to change things so i i do agree with you guys but i'm just playing devil's advocate that there is a way i think way, but i think that's more confusing of a way than just doing it here your meals even yeah. yeah i'm sure there's a way but for me i just i like a set meal plan i follow it every day and that's it yeah. but if you but if you're eating chicken or tilapia it's not going to make a fucking big difference. Well, I don't I mean, get fish a little faster, so I think to lean you out, it could, yeah. Your body can readily digest fish a lot faster than you can chicken. I eat zero fish. 
But if we're I prefer fish over chicken if I had the choice. Really? Yeah. I hate fish. See, I can eat fish all day, I don't care. I'm not I'm not uh enough of an expert to debate this thing with you, but I have had guys on the podcast like Lane Norton, for example, that would say it doesn't fucking matter how fast something digests. It's what did you eat that day and what did you expend? Yeah. I think there's a lot of arguments to both sides. Yeah. To be quite honest with you. Yeah. You know, I think it all goes by what you've done, your experience and, and what works for you. And if yeah. you're somebody who can interchange food like that and it doesn't affect you, you can grow or lose weight Then God bless you. But if you're somebody who like is, is likes the, like, like I'm the OCD. And if you're that type of person that needs that, consistent stability then i wouldn't suggest that you're somebody that can have a loose diet and it doesn't bother you that fucking go right ahead more power to you yeah i think i think it i figured who i had on the podcast but they said when it comes down to the final one percent which is what we're chasing then it's probably best to know exactly what's going in and out yeah for sure so if you're not chasing the the one percent if you're anybody other than a competitive bodybuilder you're probably yeah. fu- you're probably fine with yes. a little bit of flexibility. I would agree with that 100%. Yeah. Okay. All right, well that's some good advice we can wrap up on. Anything else you want to talk about, Nick? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh guy, if I don't talk to you before the Olympia. If you don't talk to me before the Olympia, our friendship's over and I'll fucking bash your butt. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you want to hear, I'll tell you this real what? quick. What? The hell is oh, this is my favorite. <laughs> oh, you made a new one. <laughs> that was my, so my post was this. And then I posted that and then I posted this. That's fucking great. That's Good for I you. I was bro. like, let me see if I post that I have an important announcement to make. And I, I like, I apologize for anybody that gets upset. Yeah. How fucking fast I can get people like I just I like I wanted to be like the social media douchebag for the day. How and many like, comments did you get? But so far, so for put like this, I posted that, and I posted it right before I got in the shower that last night on my story. Yeah, short Meridia within thirty seconds was like, "Yo, bro, you're right," and I go, "Dude, you're my boy. I love you." And Wait he was a like, Why? And I just took a picture, and he was like, "You're a fucking asshole." Wait a minute, uh, when you posted the original story that you had some. Night. Yeah, that you had an announcement. How many? I got blown up. My phone was going ballistic. No, no, like, but how many comments did you get on your page? Right. Oh no, I put I put that on my story. I was smart. Oh, okay. So right okay. now on the actual post, I just posted. I literally posted at eight o'clock. I had three hundred forty-one comments. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It just keeps things fucking fun, man. This is everybody takes bodybuilding very serious, and it is. I love it. I when I'm on stage, I'm like ready. To, I want to fucking fight everybody. Like I get intense, but like at the end of the day, like. It's fun. We got to remember that, like, this has been a crazy fucking year. Like, we can't be all serious and fucking. Like, there's, still, there's still. Yeah, but now next time you have a serious appoint, uh, serious announcement, no one's gonna fucking believe you. You're gonna be like, ah, oh, fuck him. Dude, the one time I did something funny, look, so excuse me. That's fuck, it. You're like the goddamn Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm gonna lose fans now. Guy, like, well, that's right. Fuck guy. Guy, you're. <laughs> I don't know who's my favorite. You or Nick? I like arguing with you the most. Because I argue back the most. No, actually, did you? Yeah, you probably didn't watch it. Because no, Cedric argued back. Me and me and Cedric. Nick watches the podcast. Me and Cedric. I I, I, I was three. I not to see everyone. Did you see the other day? I was even in my house. Your podcast was on my TV. Yeah, that's you true. Suck a bag of dicks, pal. Yeah, guy, that listen. Was a, I see who I actually get mad. <laughs> there was it was me. Oh, against, get mad. It was me against all three of them. Wait. Okay. Send me that. Which pot? When was this? It was me, Cedric, Ian. I'll eat my and... next meal watching this. Wait, you know what? Let's ask Guy while he's on the fucking channel because Nick agrees with me. Yeah. yeah. This you is good. Me... That. Oh, go ahead. Well, me... well, that's okay. It's just not going to change your mind. You're not easily swayed. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you think that you can be the greatest at something? Whatever genre you decide it is. Whatever. Musician, businessman, bodybuilding. Body yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Do you think you can be the greatest at that thing and have a balanced life? No. Thank right? You. He answered without even thinking about it. That's how obvious it is. These fucking three guys argued with me till I was ready for this. Ready. Put it like this. I have ruined relationships just because I want to be so good and successful at bodybuilding that I travel so much 
then it interferes with everything. And I'm not even the greatest at what I do. And it, it affected my life just trying to be good at what I do. I know. So to be great at it, you can't have balance because if you don't put a hundred percent into this, then you're never going to be the greatest. And a hundred percent effort means a hundred here, zero here. That's right. That's it. Yeah. And then people I'm say, well, you can't have a good life, but the, it, it, you're never going to be balanced. But this is the, this is the art where the argument gets. How skewed. did Cedric even argue that? I don't know, but this is where the argument gets skewed. Love and all this other shit with balance. Ian was saying that, well, if my life is about being with my wife and going to the gym and it makes me happy, then why am I not balanced? And I'm like, that's just, not what, just, that's not just, just that because, means. just because you found a girl to fit into your puzzle. Doesn't mean it's balanced. Doesn't mean it's balanced. It means you're, you're just, you just fit, you fit something into the puzzle. Yes. Right. Like, because I can say that too. Like my wife is. But, but you can't really ask somebody that who hasn't been in it that long and hasn't like you have to ask somebody who's been doing this for more than two years. Well, Nick, well, but, Ian's been at it for 10 years. But Ian hasn't been in the pro league for 10 years. Well, he turned pro at 22. He's been like, he's been around for a while. Really? Well, yeah. If he turned 20, I didn't even know that. 22 or 23. Really? How old is he? He's 30, right? He's 30 now. Yeah. I, didn't, I thought he recently just turned pro a couple years ago. No, I'm pretty sure he turned pro at like 23 years old. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I mean, he's been around. I, and the other thing I noticed is, I, th I noticed people get really offended by that. If you say you're unbalanced, people get offended. And I think that's why they were fighting me, because I'm like... I don't I'm, get offended. I'm not offended by that. I personally chose to make my life yeah. about this one thing. Look at, look, bro, I live in a four... Nick's been in my house. I, I'm in a four-bedroom of three... Uh, three Big ass house. Two and a half acre. I'm by myself. Yeah. If that doesn't prove it's hard to have balance doing this, <laughs> then I don't know what fucking does. Well, where fucking were you when I was arguing with these three guys that made me feel like I was a fucking retard? I'm glad. I'm glad guy wasn't on that podcast. How about this? The next time you have Cedric on, you could easily have me on. <laughs> you know what? If guy Nick, if guy was on, holy fuck, there would there would have been a lot of screaming. Because really? I was I, that bad. I was Bro. screaming. It was the first time I seen Fu. I like really get mad. Really, I'm gonna why I you got it. It's it was recent. He started yelling a little bit. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> well, I just because I was like I was baffled. I was blown away. I was like literally like I was. I, I'm actually shocked that out of everybody, I would have literally thought Cedric would have been the last one to say yes to that. Uh, I dude, I don't know. Like it was it was completely baffling to me. I'm like, how is this? How am I sitting with two like, guys? Like you, it was you, a couple you, times. Uh, you think, you, so you tell me you think The Rock has a balanced life? No. Nobody. Nobody who's the best at anything has a balanced life. Listen, my brother owns How about, this? How about this? People who are good or great at what they do, not even the best, don't have a balanced life. Yeah, yeah. Like my, like, I can, like my brother owns like five businesses. His life revolves around those businesses. That's his life. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, and he's not the greatest. He's just... In business. Yeah. Is he married? He's married, yeah, but his wife puts up with a lot of traveling and a lot sure. of like, he travels the yeah. world, right? So it's sure. like part on the relationship. That's right. That's right. So and just a big be part of being balanced is having a relationship. Yeah, but you can find someone to fit like the mold. Yeah, if you if this is the mold for your life because it's unbalanced, you're like, this is bodybuilding. Just because somebody jumped into that circle doesn't mean you're automatically balanced. You just found I somebody to fit in the circle. Yeah, like you're not who's happy with like who like being home when you're not home or somebody who's yeah. like okay we take care of the house when you're not yeah. there and okay yeah. with you traveling. That doesn't make your life balanced. That no. just makes your life easier. That's right. Like like I've been through a whole bunch of fucking relationships that didn't work out because they couldn't fit into that circle. Yep. Right there with you. So anyway, we're bringing it all back up again. The podcast listeners are gonna be annoyed because it keeps coming up. But Nick brought it up again. It wasn't my fault. That this was your time. You brought it up this time. You brought it up this time. You said to Guy that I was pissed off, and then he had to find out why. Yeah, you said, let's find out from Guy. So you both brought uh, it up. So now I all right, fine. <laughs> Nick, brought, Nick, brought up, Nick brought up when you got mad. You brought up, let's ask Guy. All right, all right. Well, I was curious what you thought, but I kind of – It was a 50-50, man. It was a 50-50, okay. <laughs> no, I, I think my answer is absolutely not. You cannot be balanced and be the best at something. Well, ask, ask Jay. Is Jay balanced? Nah, bro. <laughs> that's that's the other thing too people pointed I, a lot of people that were commenting pointed to people that were already at the very top and i'm like wait a minute you're pointing to them oh, when they've already 
travels more than anybody that I know. That's the most unbalanced life I've ever seen. Who? Jake travels more than anybody. Yeah, I don't know. I know. But what I'm saying is like they're, they're looking at people when they finally reach the golden peak. Yeah, not like, the fucking shit they got to get to. I'm like, find, I'm like, watch what happened when they were trying to get there. That's where yeah. you see the fucking people, unbalance. People see the tree. They don't see the seed and all the shit and dirt it's got to go through to get to the fucking yeah. break the soil to, to bloom. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right, boys. Thank you very much for your time. Guy, I will talk to you soon. All right, Nick, guys. Nick maybe I'll next maybe next week. Wow. Right. Next week, guy said, uh, hold, maybe I'll see you before One you go. Wait a minute. One second. I guess, I guess One the, second. No. Wait. 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 Before, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before we go, I, I only said that because you're in prep, and I don't want to bother you because the last two weeks for the Olympia has got to be really important. You know who I am. Oh, you can do it all. I f- fucking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next. <laughs> all right. Next week. Next week. We're all getting together next week. Guy said it. If guy, if guy doesn't come on, you guys all fucking heard it. It's, he said he would come on. What, what what time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock next Monday. He because he always Nick. He goes between twelve and one. I go. You pick the war, the dead middle of the day. The dead middle of the I day. Do that. I'm like, bro, we do like at night when like we're all like relaxed and. Chill. I hate doing this shit at night. At night, I like to relax with my wife, not That's with you guys. After this, you're gonna get on the podcast. And you're back up from all the conversations. Your wife's gonna be like, "You're an asshole." What? After this, I'm gonna what? You're still gonna be like like after these podcasts, I. Take an hour to like come down from like. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Is that why? No, that's not why. I still got to do the timestamps. I got to fucking edit the shit. I got to fucking put it up. It's like it takes time. It takes balance. Fuck off. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Fuck you, guys. I'll talk to you next week, eight o'clock. All right. Hey guys, Bye. thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find hostile and myself. And lastly, check out hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.